Sam Walton's success story. Born on March 29, 1918, in Kingfisher, Oklahoma, Samuel Moore Walton was the first son of Thomas Gibson Walton, a farmer who quit farming and chose farm mortgaging because farming made him and his wife, Nancy Lee Walton, very little money. Sam had only one other sibling, a boy named James. During the Great Depression, Sam's father, Thomas, worked for his brother's company, the Walton Mortgage Company, where he took possession of mortgage farms that failed to keep up with their mortgage payments. In 1923, the Walton family moved away from Oklahoma and for several years after, they hopped from one town to the other until they settled in Missouri. Here, Sam attended Shelbina and in his eighth grade became the youngest Eagle Scout in the history of the state. He was also a hard-working student and a good athlete. As the Great Depression progressed, Sam tried his best to help support his family's financial needs by taking up chores like milking the family cow, bottling the excess, and even delivering them to their customers. When he was done with that, he would deliver the newspapers made by the Columbia Daily Tribune and even sold subscriptions for magazines, all while attending high school. The high school he attended was the David H. Hickerman High School in Columbia, Missouri. By the time he graduated in 1936, he was voted the most versatile boy by his classmates. As soon as he graduated from high school, Sam believed that the best way to further support his families financially was to attend university. So, he enrolled at the University of Missouri to study economics. During his time in the university, Sam continued to work odd jobs, such as serving as a waiter in exchange for food. As a university student, Sam made the most of his time there. He joined the Beta Theta Pi fraternity, as well as the Popular Secret Society in honor of top senior men, the QEBH, and even the Scabbard and Blade, a national military honor society. And that's not all. Sam also joined the Burrow Lee Bible class, a huge combined class of Stevens College and University of Missouri students, and managed to become the class president. By the time Sam graduated from the university in 1940, his mates voted him the permanent president of the class. It was his time in high school and university that made Sam decide to go into the world of retail business because he believed that as children, it was important for them to be contributors at home rather than takers. Almost immediately after he graduated from the university, Sam got his first taste of the world of retail business when he joined the J.C. Penney Company a relatively small retailer in Des Moines, Iowa, as a management trainee. Sam was pretty enthusiastic about his job as a trainee, but he failed to be a thorough employee. For one, the fact that he hated making customers wait meant that he fussed too much over paperwork, so his bookkeeping was always a mess. In fact, at one point, Sam's boss told him that he wasn't cut out for working in the retail business and threatened to fire him. If not for Sam's abilities as a salesman, his boss would have thrown him out of the business. Fortunately for Sam, his statement that he was able to obtain about $25 worth of commissions on his trainee salary. However, two years later in 1942, Sam resigned from the job so that he could serve in World War II as part of the Intelligence Corps near Tulsa, Oklahoma. His duties included the supervision of the security at war camps housing prisoners and aircraft plants. His dedication soon earned him the rank of an army captain in an intelligence unit. Three years later, in 1945, Sam returned to civilian life and a wife and a child. Sam, now 27 years old, knew that he needed to work even harder to support his new family. So he decided to strike out on his own. He borrowed $25,000 from his father-in-law and in addition to his savings of $5,000, Sam purchased his first store in Newport, Arkansas. The store was a Ben Franklin franchise of the Butler Brothers chain. Sam worked hard to make the business a success and worked smart by pricing his products lower than those of other retailers. In the next few years, his business tripled and his younger brother James soon joined him. Of course, there was more to watch out for apart from rival businesses. With sales volume growing from $80,000 to $225,000, Walton drew the attention of the landlord, P.K. Holmes, whose family had a history in retail. Sam's landlord noticed Sam's success and decided that he wanted the business for his son as well as the franchise right. 
Sam refused to sell the business to him and the landlord decided that he wouldn't renew Sam's lease. The lack of a renewal option together with a prohibitively high rent of 5% of sales were early business lessons to Sam. Despite forcing Sam out, Holmes bought the store's inventory and fixtures for $50,000. Many others would have given up in frustration, but not Sam. He went on a long search for a new business location around the rural areas in Arkansas and found a nice place in Bentonville. Sam negotiated the purchase of the small discount store and the title to the building on the condition that he will be given a 99-year lease to expand into the shop next door. However, the owner of the shop next door refused six times, and when Sam had already given up on Bentonville, his father-in-law, without Sam's knowledge, paid the shop owner a final visit and $20,000 to secure the lease. At that point, Sam had just enough left from the sale of the first store to close the deal and reimburse his wife, Helen's father. They opened for business with a one-day remodeling sale on May 9, 1950. Before he bought the Bentonville store, it was doing $72,000 in sales and after Sam's personal touch, the sales increased to $105,000 in the first year and then $140,000 and $175,000 subsequently. Still, his troubles were far from over. Sam also wanted to open discount store chains in small rural towns, but the management of the chain refused his concept. Frustrated, Sam decided to leave the Ben Franklin franchise to set up his chain. In mid-1962, Sam opened his first store, which he named Walmart, in Rogers, Arkansas. It was during this time that both he and his brother teamed up with a man called Stefan DeBosch to grow the business. With his usual style, Sam ensured the product prices were kept low, and this became one of the major forces behind the success of the business. After taking Walmart public in 1970, Sam was one of the first ever to introduce a profit-sharing plan whereby employees could benefit from the profitability of the store by offering them stock options as well as store discounts. Sam attempted to demonstrate the respect he had for his workers and encouraged them in their effort. In turn, they will treat you as a partner, and together you will all perform beyond your wildest expectations, he predicted. It wasn't all smooth sailing though, because in the stock market crash of 1987, when the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 508 points in a day, that week, Walmart shares fell by 23%, causing roughly $1.7 billion of Sam's wealth to simply evaporate. However, Sam continued to give his best to the company until it became the world's largest corporation. As at his death in 1992, Sam's net worth was $8.6 billion. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other interesting videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.